Okay, so we have officially started our meeting at 6.34. That's what I have. Ish. All right. Mm -hmm. And so we'll call to order. Everybody's here. Yeah. We'll go slow so you can make notes, Gail. And maybe I'll make notes. Maybe I'll make notes too in case you missed something. Well, I, now Morgan showed me how to watch these videos. I think I shared that with the group. There are a couple of little steps you have to take. And so I did watch, I watched the April meeting to make sure I had it right. Okay. All righty. So uh, call to order, roll call, um, approve the agenda. I was going to suggest an amendment. I'm moving to amend the agenda at uh, item four on business. It's up for discussion, but that would be a, a look-see at the letter that Karen Borchert has prepared for the packet. It's not urgent in the sense that the packet doesn't have to be available until July 5th, but she did prepare it and send it to us. And so I would be move business. to add that. That would be old business. Mm -hmm. Okay. Number four, mm -hmm. review. Um, or at least okay. a discussion, though. All right. I will move to approve the agenda as amended. Very good. Thank you. Second that. Okay. Oh, we lost Lori. Where'd Lori go? Lori? I, I think she might have been having some trouble hearing or something because she kind of kept going on and off and on and off. So okay. Um we want to approve the last meeting minutes. And I've sent those out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I did review that briefly, but watch the I watched the video, so I'm confident that they're as accurate as they can be. Yeah, I didn't have any changes to them. Somebody want to make a motion to approve the minutes then? Move to approve. Second. All righty. And homeowner comments. Let's see. We only have four participants here and we have no attendees. So we'll go blow right past that. Um, all righty. So for old business, we were going to discuss the entity manual changes and the board response. And to real quickly look at that. Um, um, it just uh, they discussed. We discussed it. The four points. And they had pre actually previously they sent it all to the uh, attorney ahead of time so that when we came back we had it all um, complete. They had the the input and all that. And so uh, that's the gag order. I'll throw that out of the way. Um, so. Um, Basically, it what they said was um, that the board, the attorney felt for step number one, entity recommends deleting the following on section four one ten about application letters and requesting that they put the send the packet earlier. They said the board doesn't have the um, authority to impose those conditions upon a candidate. And so they tossed that out the window. And so they. Um, I thought that was the attorney opinion about um, requiring an entity member to withdraw if they were running for an elected position. I thought that's what he said was an improper requirement of a candidate. That that's true too. Okay. Oh, it's right. for both of them. So entity recommend okay, entity recommends blah 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 blah. Um so anyhow, the first step here they said that oh I see what they did. Okay. It says um recommend replacing section 410 with the following and they we had put shall and they they put all candidates 
shall submit and um the other one was we put we put words in there we may, and it has to be optional submit an optional so they just changed our wording a little bit on that one but i don't think it made it in there in the final copy either because i have have the final copy here somewhere um that they gave me and i didn't see it in there at all so uh, sorry i'm kind of trying to follow all this and i have not cut up caught up on all of the board meetings and i apologize so is what I'm hearing is that there were just there were items discussed in the board meeting about changes that then did not wait that they discussed and presumably agreed to and then those did not make it into the revised version that we were just sent is that accurate Gail you discussed what we discussed was um, recommended deleting the following, some lines out of section 4110, deleting the once a candidate application has been accepted, the NNE will send a letter. We were going to ask them rather than us sending the letter, we wanted them to send their bio with their application. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, second thing we discussed was um, resigning from any committee and uh requesting that anybody running for the board had resigned from the entity architecture control and uh and all that and the, the attorney answer was Same they didn't now. have to have that but he gave us an out and he says clearly if this requirement is voted upon by the members as a bylaw amendment it would be valid so he said that we could do that and i was going to bring that up at the board meeting i thought we were going to let me before we get there and then number three says adding some wording and we had the wording we wanted and uh basically they said that a candidate can withdraw all the way up to printing of the um okay. until the time the ballots are printed can i I want to comment on that one when you're ready for me to comment. And I want to go back to number one a little bit because I'm kind of confused about number one. Are you ready for me to comment? Yep. Or go back to number one. Okay. So I thought what I heard you say is that there were discussions about those changes about, about submitting everything together at once because this impacts the letter that we're going to talk about later. Yep. And that there was board discussion about that and they were going to change some of that wording but that wording didn't make it into the final and any is it in there or not i guess there's what we discussed then there's what the board discussed and then there's what's in the final copy so i know that what we discussed did not necessarily make it into the final copy as discussed but did what the board discussed make it into the final draft of the NE manual that we have received? Well, I have. I don't, so I don't believe it did. Go ahead, Gail. Yeah, I, I'd like a chance to make a couple of uh, a little bit of background. Um, basically, I was at my wit's end to find a copy of the approved revised NE manual. And so finally, um, Joanna Monday said, Gail, I'm sending it to you. This is the revised manual as approved by the board. Um, so I have it, I have it in front of me. To answer Karen's question, we no longer ask them to send the bio of that stuff as part of the application packet, it's just gone. It's, I mean, we, we can ask them to send it, but it's definitely there are no shells or requirements that okay. they do so. Okay. Um, yes. Okay. So I have it here in front of me now too. We mm -hmm. can't say shall, we can ask. So they did change okay. whatever, but it's in there as uh, we can ask them to. Okay. okay. So there's two parts of that. One is if, if it's a requirement to submit it, and I'd always understood that it actually wasn't a like you couldn't be, you couldn't be deemed ineligible to run for not having submitted yes. that. So it makes sense that the wording match that. Is that your recollection too, Rob, that 
you were supposed to submit it, but they couldn't like not. That's correct. Not like the financial disclosures. If you don't provide the financial disclosures, you're, you don't get approved. Or if you're not a member in good standing or whatever. Okay, so that's part one. So that makes sense. And part two is we were trying to have everything submitted all on the same date by the 5th. And so that's what's cool. the wording on that? It can't be early according to the NNE manual. Do you guys have it in front of you right now? I apologize. I don't have it open right now. We are not able to, um, and this is where it's kind of weird. We can't do anything until we open the, okay. open everything and draw names and officially run them through for vetting, for in good standing and set the order that they're gonna run at before we can even say anything. But Gail brought up a good point. What if they send it in electronic? We know who they are. Um, but we still can't do anything until the day that we open and draw names and you know for order of on the thing. Then we can real quickly, and and that wasn't clear to me if if N and E can do it or if the office has to do it. By by the manual, it says N and E would send them a letter and say, "Could you you know can make sure you get your bio in if you want to get it in the view, and it has to be here by such and such a date so we can get it in the view." Okay, so it's in the letter requesting it, and the date was a question, and that was my question too. Since it's sent electronically, someone, presumably just the NNE chair, would have visibility to who was running and what their vision and bio is. And yeah. that was my question: was is there a presumption of privacy that we don't, that someone shouldn't even, or we can't compel them to send that before the deadline? So it sounds like, yes, we are holding to this. We, I suppose somebody could send it early, but we can't compel them to. Yeah. If they send okay. it electronically and if, you know, the chair could say, hey, um, thank you for your submission. Can, would you like to send in your, bio? if you could send in your bio now, it would speed things up for making sure it all gets in the view. Go ahead, Gail. Yeah. So Karen, what it says in 4.1.5 basically is that your article, your letter to the candidates will provide instructions. So it's really silent on what we do. I, I think the question of whether or not the candidates have confidentiality until the fifth, um, they're not really candidates until they have been vetted. Mm -hmm. So I think that we need to leave it alone. As if they choose to use Facebook or whatever to announce they're going to run, find freedom if they wish. But it's not going to be our role to to confirm or unconfirm until the fifth, because they get vetted to be in good standing and the application is complete. So it will be. Yeah. Basically, if they send that stuff in early, that's the question we can discuss. Maybe when we discuss it later, or we could discuss it in at the next, but you're going to have your deadline for that letter. Well, no, the deadline doesn't use. The deadline simply is July 5th. So yeah, we could discuss it at the June meeting, what is going to go in and not go in, what we ask and don't ask, and they may do and et cetera, optional and et cetera, if you mm -hmm. want. Yeah, yeah, I was just thinking about that from the wording, but I think that makes sense. At least I'm clarified on what, because we want the letter instructions to match the manual so that it's right. consistent between the two. So we're allowed to we're allowed to put all that in the in the instructions for if mm -hmm. you're gonna run for the board, you have to do you have to fill this thing out. And you could also add mm -hmm. your other stuff too at the same time if if you would like. But yeah. then we can't do anything officially until we've actually opened after Labor Day, opened it up and do our draw and bet the candidates. And then we can, it's a little more official then. Yeah. Okay. So the next thing that happened was section 412 was erased from the manual that said after two business days, that was blocked out and it 412 was changed to a candidate who wishes to withdraw shall provide written notice to the chair of NNE and the board president no 
reason for withdrawal is needed submission to withdraw constitutes the candidate's express consent for Sudden Valley to notify members of the candidate's withdrawal. Any withdrawal shall be effective on the date that it is first received by the chair or the board president. And they put and at the top and or at the bottom because uh, we're not sure who they're going to send the letter to. They might send it to the board president. So we wanted it and or. The Sudden Valley Community Community Association will provide notice of the membership, notice to the membership of the candidates withdrawal via official SVCA notification channels only up to the time the ballots are printed. After that point, they can't say anything because it could constitute shaping, you know, trying to shape the ballot or whatever well so. no that is that isn't what the attorney said he just said that people may have already voted after it's mailed that was the date he used so and i think it's important that we're clear about the reason why so they he didn't said, use the attorney's wording they used right they they went with the board's wording of the attorney wrote uh well, Mike, you might not want to say that out loud in case it's confidential <laughs> to read the yeah. actual wording, just in case. Well, the attorney's response and the board's response, they went with the ballots printed, not ballots mailed. Okay, so here's where I wanted to bring up something with this. Number one, the if I recall, and I'm paraphrasing and whatever, we've seen it, so if I get in trouble, whatever. He said this was a business decision, not a legal decision, but then he did give his legal reasoning for why it would be the mail date. And the reason was some people could have already voted prior to the announcement that someone has withdrawn. So some people would have certain information when they voted and some people would have other information when they voted. I don't agree with it, but I get the point of what he's trying to say there. But that was based on mail date, which is different than print date. The other reason why I, so number one, my thought is if we're going to go with um, attorney's opinion, go with the attorney's opinion, because otherwise we're just opening up a can of worms of this is just what we decided. So if you're going to kind of use that, the attorney said as your reasoning, then do what, then let's make it what he said, which was mail date. My other reason about thinking that mail date is more appropriate is because I don't see on either the fancy calendar that Gail delivered to my house or in the contract, an actual print date stated. So in the calendar, I don't see this is the date it's gonna be printed or it has to be printed by this date. And I also don't see that in the contract. There's a date that Sudden Valley sends the proofs and there's a date that they you know, send approval, but not an actual date that it's printed and if the reasoning was oh after it's printed then that name is still going to appear and it's just going to be confusing that date is actually a few days before the print date so what are we actually talking about print date to me is not defined mail date is we have it's in our calendar and it's also in the contract that election materials mailed out to SBCA members October yeah no September 27th so that's an actual date Print date, Didn't I don't we see. We have a print date. I know we do have a date that the final date that we could get stuff in. I got to find my calendar here. Um, we have a final date that we can send things to them. That's not the date it's printed. That it'll go to print the next day. Right. So what date are we talking about here? Uh, the last day that we can send them something? Last the day the printed? board submit photos by it was September approval of the, the final final is 915 is the GM's final board approval of the election material. And so 515 is the final date that we, we approve everything that's on it. We have until that point, we could say this person withdrew and take their name off. Agreed. That's not the print date. 
that's not described as the print date. That's the last day we give approval. So if that's the date okay. they want, they need to change the wording to the last day that Sudden Valley can send changes to the ballot. If there's going to be requirement in the manual, it needs to be something you can measure from. So if there's no print date, then you can't measure it to see if you're in compliance. Thanks, Rob. That's a better way of saying print date is not defined. I can't find print date defined in the calendar or the contract. Does it um, neutralize the attorney's concern if we use the mail date because no one can have voted before the mail date because they don't have the ballots? And the idea is no one's going to vote with incomplete information. So they simply, they can withdraw up until the mail date. And, and as the article is on to say, SBCA or NNE, then can publicize that information using the official channels. Mm -hmm. So that when the ballots come out, they may have the names on it. But if the, you know, if this information has been made public before the mail date, even if it contains, the ballot may contain a name or two of people who wish to withdraw, that information has been shared. If they withdraw after the mail date, then we're back in the kind of hot water or can of worms that we have been trying to deal with. But he, you know, I gather that the legal opinion is that could disenfranchise or at least people could feel disenfranchised if they voted for those folks and then learned that they had withdrawn. So therefore we'd say nothing. Okay, so Just say nothing I until the AGM. I have a note here that I'm going to, well, we'll hold off here. We'll get finish this up. But anyhow, I agree with what you said, Karen. Um, print date not defined. And so yeah. they need to decide what is going to be, what is that? Uh, are we going to set a print date or are we going to make it final approval date on 915? Or are we going to wait mail date. up to mail date, which is the mail date was 927? Which is what the attorney said. He said mail I date. Like, in his I would like to have it done before so it's not printed ideally agreed you'd like to make the people have to withdraw before and then sudden valley doesn't say anything afterwards yeah because we can't control when they withdraw yeah we can wish that they would withdraw in a way that it could be shared but things happen Right. It'd be nice to say, be able to say, if you decide to withdraw, please do it before nine fifteen. That's the print date, so that it's not you're not printed on the ballot. Well, I do think we could probably share that separately and let people know this is the last date. Nothing can be changed after that date, but. Hold on, I'm trying to think. But announcing withdrawals that come in after that date, but before the mail date, as currently in the current revised NNE manual, we would not, of course, there's the ambiguity of the print date, but we, we SVCA, NNE, would not announce any withdrawals after that print date, final approval date, whichever it turns out to be. Although that date, as you pointed out, is a week or 12 days before the mail date. The 15th versus the 27th, quite a bit of time. So that, so, I believe, is why that is the argument in favor of the mail date, because there could be more. No one will have voted. No one could have voted. But there could have been people who would fail to change their mind and their names are on the ballot. And so I think in our earlier discussions this year, our desire was to share that information so that people didn't vote for, for candidates who have decided they're not available. Now we've heard a legal opinion that perhaps people would believe that they've been disenfranchised so that the information, any information available should be available to everyone before anyone has voted. Once they've voted, they may have voted for someone who's not 
going to be available, but we will not, Sutton Valley NNE will not have any responsibility for calling that out until the AGM. And then we call it out because if votes have come in for someone who's not serving, we call it out and say they're being counted but disregarded. It's it's basically saying to me that after the mail date, after the possibility that someone could have voted, Sutton Valley doesn't take upon itself any obligation to notify the, you don't think that's what it's saying? To notify they won't. the, huh? They but won't. I think that's what the legal opinion was, is that right. once people might have voted, Sutton Valley isn't going to, um, communicate with people or Southern Valley shouldn't communicate with people that there's been a change because some people may have already voted and didn't have that information at the time. Of course, because that information didn't exist, that's the reason. But here's the issue is that in reality, that information gets out. Whether Southern Valley says it or not, people- It will get out. It will get out. So what I would like, my feeling on this, just this is just my opinion, is shorten the window of differing information. So there's going to be community information and there's going to be what Sutton Valley officially says. Regardless of when that date is, people are also likely to be upset that Sutton Valley didn't let them know that a candidate had withdrawn because some people might still vote for that person. That's not what the attorney said. And so I support going with his advice on this for that reason. But the reality is that if that happens, if someone withdraws later, there's gonna have two sets of information and that is going to cause issues. And I would like to shorten that window because like Gail said, we don't have any control over when people choose to withdraw. So if we can lengthen the time that Sudden Valley is willing to try to communicate to people, to me, it, it reduces where there's a divergence of information. My preference would be to put out all information that we have as soon as we have it, but that wasn't the advice the attorney gave us. Yes, and I think it makes sense to stick with what he said, but in sticking with what he said, actually stick with what he said not a separate well, I, interpretation of what well, he said. I, I agree. Can I make a motion then, just so we can keep our meeting moving? I'll, sure. I'll move, we re ask, request the board to change 4.1.12 and change it to, uh, the. it's gonna be the, I think the ninth line and 4.1.12 or the third from the bottom to read only up to the time the ballots are mailed. That's my motion. Second. Okay, so we're gonna request that the if a candidate withdraws, that we strike the two final print date, which, which wasn't defined that. and it's not defined. And that's the reason why is print date isn't defined to go with the attorney's suggestion up to mail date. That's that's what I would say. And Gail. Well, well, do we request, do we urge, do we recommend? Recommend. We... <laughs> recommend. <laughs> recommend. And, and do we need to vote on this motion on the floor? We, uh, I think so. Roberts? Well, in due course, I mean, if we have discussion, GC and then KD. I mean, we have been having the discussion, so I thought it might move it along to have a yeah. motion. Sure. No, I was just, yeah. Okay. So that's that's done. Well, wait, we haven't voted. Oh, I thought we did. You can call. Oh, we made a motion and second. Okay. All right. And discussion on that then is, is there, an, do we need discussion on that? Yeah, I think we've had it. It's just me. <laughs> Okay, what's the vote? How many, all four recommending mail date attorney suggestion? Okay, so it's unanimous. Okay, that's good. Okay, I can't spell unanimous, so I, but I put it there 100%. Well, so you're not the secretary. <laughs> I misspelled unanimous horribly there. Okay, 
one, two, three, and then four. Uh, this this fourth part was uh, section four one four status of boats cast, and they all agreed the status of the boats cast. If somebody bails out and they still get boats, the boats will be counted, but they won't be brought into any part of the election. And I will go back and look at all this. And Gail, I think, has looked at all that to see if it, all that was done and in the new manual. And we also we also want to recommend that the, um, the board members and N and E members in the booklet be changed to current. Page five. It's yeah. the old, it's the old. Old and a new committee and the old board secretary. And the I, date. I have a more complete motion that I, I've created. Could I just read it? It it would supplement the motion that we've just passed because it covers a couple of other items. And I, I worked it out pretty carefully because I think this is very sensitive and I'd like it to go through. So the, here's I'm going to move this, but and then we could have a second and then we could discuss and we could do whatever. Uh, since nominations and elections relies on a timely and accurate manual to communicate with applicants and candidates during the 2023 election season, and since the revised NME manual currently available still requires a few substantive corrections, namely cover date should be changed to 2023, page five, signatures of current board secretary and of current NNE members, page 10, uh, and we've just went over, that was the motion that we just made, change uh, only up to the time the ballots are printed to only up to the time the ballots are mailed, that we've, we've done that motion already. And But there is one last one to maybe bundle them up. Page 11, uh, pagination was a problem with the existing one, but it's 4.2.13, replace communications committee with nominations and elections committee. And that has to do with the candidate forums. Yes. So, oh, and there's a, so I go on with my long motion, I've printed it out. Along with many smaller miscellaneous corrections, uh, pagination, style, consistency, et cetera, it is moved that the nominations and elections request the board to approve these four substantive changes at its 525 meeting and provide a date certain by which a complete, accurate, and publishable 2023 NNE manual will be available so that we'll have something it, that we can use to, for Karen's letter. Her letter isn't due yet. It does have to reflect what will be in the, in the actual approved official manual. That's oh, you, I would making, second. You're making that as a motion. Yes. And Rob yeah. seconds it. Okay. And you have all that written up nice and neatly, right? I do. I do. And I'm not good at uh, screen sharing. Or I, would, I, I sent it to you all, though. I thought I sent okay, it to you. Okay. I'll I'm have sorry. to find it because I want to take it with me tomorrow night so that I can. I'll make read sure it. you have it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, hopefully, and just a little bit more background. So when Joanne sent me the, she called it the revised manual on Monday, I went through it. I spent all of, oh my God, all of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I don't know, proofing it very carefully. And I have sent it back to her with with these changes and with the um, with the proofs, just FYI. I know as, as NNE secretary, I would think maybe I could even create it. But I think that right now uh, we have a new GM who's learning the ropes and wants to make sure she's covering all the bases. At any rate, a lot of things are being done by admin and in a sense, it's less work. Historically, but... that the last, the last in an e-manual that came out, the one that we are discussing right now, mm -hmm. um, Nancy, myself, and uh, Steve, did all that on Google Docs and we Steve was really good with Google Docs and he he changed all the lines and the, we went through it word letter by letter and mm -hmm. period question marks and everything and spacing and all that and then presented it as a finished document so that's our job um to do that so 
we should not ask staff to do that. Well, um, I think that Joanne is running this, and I believe that she is asked, I don't think she's doing it herself, I would hope not, but I think she is tasking someone with, with updating it, working on the formatting errors. That's my understanding. Uh, I'm not sure how to handle that part, Michael. I, I mean, I, I volunteered I to do it to her. Historically, when Linda was doing this and we made the changes and when Nancy was chair and we made the changes, we presented a finished document both times to the board mm -hmm. and got their approval for it. Staff did not do this. Well, you know, um, shall we vote on the motion and then discuss a, a recommendation? I, I did volunteer to do it because it's work. It's just work and it's work I've done all my life. Um, but I didn't want to step on toes if uh, there's a process underway. I think We've made a motion to and second it to, to to these four points that you have mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. um, the other po point is make a motion of do we want in and e to present a finished document or do we want to um, have staff make request staff to make the changes? Which should we vote vote on the first motion and then make a second motion? I would vote for that. I would vote for voting. Yeah, let's do that. Agreed. Okay, so I vote in favor of, call the, call the question. I vote in favor of Gail's motion. Of the long motion. Okay, so that yes. one's unanimous. Yes. And then the second one is, and we can discuss, is someone going to make a motion? I don't uh, know you know how, I don't I mean, know if we need a motion to talk about editing the the document. Um, maybe I don't know, but uh, make a motion that we present a finished document to um, the to the board for them to approve. That entity makes a complete document the way that it that uh, that we approve make and approve a complete <clears throat> document to the board for them to to accept. I second that. Okay, so that's seconded by Karen. Well, normally the secretary uh, would do that. And I, you know, when I sign on to be secretary, I assume I do things like that. So I'm willing, I'm willing to do it. Um, but I am aware that there may be another process in play right now. Can I ask a question? My question is, um, uh, I'm used to doing documents like this and I saw in the past where Steve was editing. That's that's a lot to just hand over to you, Gail. I thank you for doing that. But if we were to say, hey, let's get a couple of us or anybody who's willing to sit down and, and help with that and proofread as we go along, uh, does that have to be an official Zoom meeting? That's, I mean, can we, okay. <laughs> so. In oh. six weeks or months doing this meetings all where right. we work through each step and and all that and then actually well actually we did a bunch of it on our own and then came back but you're, you're right rob we came back all on our own with our finished suggestions that went through them and put them in and took them out and made a final document together but um it's do just we want this to take months another month to get done or do it's not that yeah. there isn't that much to change it's it's four points yeah. i mean it's a few pages it's just a few things on a page that need changed no i don't think it's real real hard it's just some sometimes i i'm the, I'm the style that i i'm very, i like to collaborate in teams and whatnot so i'm just saying i'm willing to, to help if anybody needs help i'm kind of used to when i was in the workplace we used to They'd hand us a dozen donuts and a pot of coffee and said, "Build the, write the process, and 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 don't leave the the, the conference room until you're done." You know, so. Um, so, Gail, you had something to say, didn't you? Yeah, only basically, Rob. No, I know what you're saying, and to be honest, I would rather not have this thing run on for another two months. I don't think we can do it. We need to have our finished document by date certain, so that we can continue, you know, with the recruitment and et cetera. However, 
apart from formatting and some small things, the changes, the, there are the four major changes. I think that Michael could bring them, should, we voted that he will bring them to tomorrow night's meeting and ask approval of them. And they'll say yay or nay. I mean, that's the, the way it is. I could do this pretty quickly. I am also more than happy if Joanne has lined up some someone who wants to do it and part of her staff who has the skill set to let them do it because the rest is very small stuff. I also sent you guys my proofing. It's a one page document, page by page, section number by section number, missing period, you know, inconsistent capitalization as boring stuff. But, you know, I have a little press. I mean, I've been a writer and a publisher. This is what I do, basically. Yeah. But it wouldn't be a lot of work for me to do it. It's not. But if if uh, Joanne has something all all set up, and especially if the board is comfortable with the substantive changes, hey, I mean, it's work. It's all when we do this volunteering stuff, it's work. It's just work. Well, so Gail, I don't think there's anything incorrect about the N and E committee um, uh, making changes to their document and handing a finished document to the to the board for approval um, when we were on the Well, the problem is the board believes we were, it's already approved a document. Right. If what I was just going to say, what I was just going to say is when I was on the communications committee, we wrote right. a lot of um, documentation. In fact, we wrote a, a, a new neighbor uh, uh, welcome uh, handbook to them. Oh. Uh, so, you know, I, there's precedence. Right. We've done our own um, documentation. Uh, went to leadership for approval and, and that that's i think the, the right process so i'm agreeing with you I, I guess my devil's advocate concern here is if nne submitting this is going to require nne to get together again before we can submit it to the board is that going to just extend the process even Another further month. because we first have to get it together and then we'd have to meet to approve it and then we would have to which we could I mean I don't mind having another meeting but then we would have to send it to the board and get it on the agenda and agreed I I am surprised by how this process has worked in that I felt that it was NNE's document and we would be making the changes and what I was expecting from the last board meeting when they discussed it was, hey, we can't quite do this. Let's not do that. Go back and rework it maybe or, and that the changes, we would bring back a second draft of changes. And maybe at that point, yes, it's put it in a whole thing. So I'm a little surprised by how this has evolved, I guess, but but we're on a time crunch. And so we need to do it the fastest way possible. So if the fastest way possible is Gail just doing it and being like, this is it. And we all agree. And then the board approves. Yes. But if it's going to take multiple meetings and weeks and whatever for NNE to do it versus staff, which do seem to have taken ownership of it, just in that, you know, the changes weren't sent back to us to make, they were just made. I think they're still pending, to be honest. I don't know that the document, apart from incorporating the uh, language based on, uh, you know, the legal opinion, that part uh, is in the, in the new manual. But, well, we're asking for a couple, four really substantive changes. And if the board approves them uh, and we give the language, we have given the language we would like, and they're small. I mean, anyone who is skilled at Microsoft Word or whatever can probably do this within 30 minutes. But the formatting issue of the document is a much bigger one. It's a big one because I think that the document that we that the board has, the document we have on hand right now is probably a, an amalgamation of documents from the past. And that's why the formatting keeps changing and why the pagination changes and et cetera. This is this is this mechanical work, but it's not doesn't affect our process as 
as the committee, you know, manages the elections. So to be honest, with all due respect, if we had anticipated this earlier, we perhaps could have said NNE will take care of it. But I, like you, we all probably thought we were. And so mm -hmm. I think now, especially Joanne has has set up some work order, work plan, you know, to get this done. Um, I would I would be more than happy to go out and fertilize my roses <laughs> tomorrow. At uh, any rate, but I would also be willing to do it if it would help her out and if she would trust us, because that's where I think then the then they will need to prove and the board will need to prove and you know that's why I, would, I think my instinct is to say if if the board will accept the four things that we're asking for. Um, and then do the the you know the manual labor involved in just cleaning it up. Great, that's great. That's my. I feel like that's just the open question. There is what is everyone's understanding of who owns this document? You know, I thought it was he owns this document. That's this... what I'm trying. To, I'm trying to say. I've said this three times. The last three N and E chairs headed up the changes in the NE manual and we pre we did it we got board approval and then we put it all together and submitted it as a finished document that's the way it was done and they approved it. they approved everything before we printed it all up and then we handed them a finished document and they posted it online, made copies and handed them out. That's what you have in your, your books is what we did last year. And in any put the whole thing together. It doesn't, that what we're doing this time is just a few lines here and there and a couple of names on a couple of pages. It won't take more. I could sit here and do it tonight in a half hour. Um, and and it, it'll be fine. Well, the thing is also I don't think we have a I don't think we have a word document. I think what we have is a PDF. Well, and, and we did it we did it in Google Docs and then copied it over to a word document. But um at yeah, any the, rate, the we, have a lot, we have a lot to cover here yet, and we've already got an hour into this. So well how about how about I have two notes here. One uh, present the four points that Gail made and we voted on for board approval mm -hmm. and then ask the board, do you want us to put this together like we did in the past or do you want the staff to put this together and get their answer and leave it at that? I, I, that sounds good to me. Can I, can we amend the motion then? And I might change the wording a little bit to say we and any would What's the word? I don't know if recommend is it, but entity would like to take these changes and make some other corrections and submit the full draft to the board for approval. And then there's no question of what was approved because we have it, we created it. Yeah. Well, I would say entity will take the task, call it a task, will take the task of of what you what you said eloquently. Uh, but I would add, ta I would say task. Mm -hmm. So are we amend? So we had a motion on the table that was to. Wait, the motion was, was on... initially to um, present a fit that the motion was any would present a finished document to the board for their approval. Okay, so that's that, that was is... Michael's motion and you seconded that. Yeah, yeah, so it kind of changes the previous one that we approved, which was to ask for a date certain. And so we're taking it beyond that and saying, we will provide that to the board. So the motion, this motion as it stands is is still accurate, but I'm just wondering if we, if there's anything we have to go back and, or are we- We could uh, leave the other one in place. I mean, the board will probably do what it does and we will learn tomorrow night and of course I would be hopeful that it would even come up because we've had a lot of difficulty you know I think Michael has brought to the brought this 
as an agenda of the board for the past three or four, if not more meetings, you know. I mean, you can, yeah, you can do it in a board meeting. You can, uh, I mean, just like Gail did this time, ask for an amend, amendment of the agenda. I an well. email this today saying, I, I would like to put this in an email back on the okay. agenda as old business. Okay. Because um, there's parts of it that are not, we do not have a complete in an email the way that yeah. we put it together. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. And I okay. think, and I think that uh, if you said that we're willing to take the task of, of of doing the edits, I think Joanne would probably welcome that because then her staff can go do uh, other meaningful work, and we can we can work on this on this one as well. Okay. Well, yeah. Michael, do you want to amend your motion then to say that uh, your motion is and any. How should we put it? Volunteers and any is willing to prepare the final draft. I like the I like Rob's words. Entity will take the task of I'm presenting sorry. the board with a final draft. Yeah. That's our motion, but we need we do need the board itself. Look at to that. It. And since we've discussed it, how about a vote? Well, we can vote, but I need to be clear on the motion, and I'm not. So, could someone please? The motion the is the motion is um, <coughs> the motion is um, before us that says N and E will take the task to make all changes approved and then present a complete manual to N and E manual to the board. We move that N and E will take the task of updating or correcting All the, the approved points and present a new complete N and E manual for board approval. I like that. Because first I'm going to ask them to approve these four points mm -hmm. and, and anchor them in. And then also establish, you know, the other pages that like this is the wrong date, this is the wrong people, this is mm -hmm. here, and um, and then we will. The second part is we will um, complete the task of um, rewriting the manual with all the approved board approved changes, and then present a complete manual. So, so that's the motion. And it was seconded. And who seconded it, Karen? Well, you yeah. seconded this one, Karen. Yeah, uh, I seconded it. Well, I know the people are anxious to vote, but you know, I might vote against it. And this is why, number one, selfishly, it's going to be work for me. But more importantly, really, because I am willing to work, is why I've, you know, stuck my head out to do this. Is I'm worried that it will it will run into more delays. The board won't like it. They they will not accept it. They'll want to do it. Maybe if that's the answer. I mean, we're saying we're moving that we will present, and then and then what? We, I think we still need. So what answer. if we amend to say if the if the board does not approve in any making these changes. Mm -hmm they need like what the previous what our previous motion said we need a date certain that we will be provided so we're oh, willing to I take like on that. the work i like that i like that that because so, that's only i just always want to just keep our thing going you know not yeah. just stuck in the weeds of obstruction or i don't know people being overworked if not approved if this motion or if this offer not approved by the by board then we need a date certain. We'll repeat the language from the first one. Yeah, they'll need to vote on a certain date that we will be provided with the final, mm -hmm. final, final publishable copy. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I think I've got it. Okay, now so are you happy? <laughs> I did volunteer to do the, to do our, the Bible of NNE <laughs> to read you it. Okay. <laughs> All in favor? 
All righty, reluctantly. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Gail. Okay. I better get back to the agenda. Where are we with everything? But I knew that that would be a big one. Yeah. We still got a lot to go here. We need to real quickly, uh, we need to move on this stuff a little quicker here. So we were going to look at the letter for the view for the election. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, it's the letter, it's the announcement, really. that's I sent it to you all. I sent it again today. I have been in touch with Bill Helm and I told him he would have it tomorrow. Uh, but I do need and I need to approve it. In the meantime, Michael, you've said Joanne has requested that we send it to her and she'll submit it as part of her packet. Is that correct? She suggested that we could send it to her and she would put it all in with the packet that they were going to send also for next month's publication. Yes. But um, it was a suggestion. It wasn't like, no, you send it to me and I'll send it in. So. Uh, I did mention to her, I says, Gail has been in contact. She knows Bill. And uh, and so I said, I'll let you know tomorrow night. I would so, I would prefer to cut out the middleman and just. Linda yeah, said her own in. Yeah, I, I'm not quite I'm not quite certain. I mean, certainly and any collaborates with staff and whatnot, but I don't I mean. I, I don't see any reason to put additional burden on them. I don't see any reason like things sometimes just get missed in the communication. I think I have it up and I think I know how to screen share. If you guys want me to. Can you do that? I was sort of trying yeah. to find it. What, what I, are you volunteering um, for, Carolyn? I didn't hear. I am. I just pulled up the views announcement oh. that you use. Is this the correct one? Yeah, that's it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. So we can just look through this. And probably could even change it real, unless it's, what is this? Is this PDF? No. I don't know. I can't change it right now, but we can no. read through it. Yeah. Can you guys see it? Yeah, yeah. You'll have to scroll it up and down though. So. Okay. I think can I, I ask a question? Uh, can you scroll there, there where it says completed documents? <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, I don't get too tedious, but um, uh, are those application documents? I mean, could we put some kind of a noun on there or something that describes what those documents, so it says completed documents. If I've never ran, what documents? Um, well, you know, this is just our first opening shot that the application period begins on July 5th. <coughs> and then Karen's letter will go to people who actually request an application. It will be part of the actual application and it will spell out what they need to do. So I, I don't know. Another post, there will be another post in, in July's. Right. Um, and it should have, like the stuff I sent you today, Gail, it should have the complete date set up in it of da da da, da you know, the date of the opening on July 5th, the closing on September 5th, the that mm -hmm. will draw names, the withdraw date of whichever mm -hmm. we get for time mm -hmm. of mailing and all that, and um and the date of the election. And so, but th those are in those e in that stuff that I sent you today that were copies of the last three years of what Linda put in the view and you can see how mm -hmm. she did that I thought they were done really well mm -hmm. but this is just kind of like the opening salvo of hey we're elections are coming up and there you know people can start seeing it so I think this will be all be fine I'll, I'll take a last look before I send it to Bill to make sure I haven't don't have a date or something in here that now conflicts with the revised legal language yeah. There might be something, and if so, I might just take it out because we're yeah. still working through a couple of things there anyway, right? And then the Karen letter that will go with the actual application packet will be correct. And then also the July views announcement because Karen's letter doesn't go in the views, it goes in the packet. Yep. Yeah. It's, it well, is it, like I'd a cover like to letter. That we approve this. Uh, with the caveat that Gail will recheck any date that might be in conflict with uh, our understanding of the we'll energy. Second that. Thank yeah. you. 
Hey, Gail, this is small and it's probably not that big of a deal yet, but I thought that I read that the Welcome Center closes for business, in-person business at 4 p.m. I imagine they're not going to turn anyone away, but I'm just, I'm actually thinking ahead for when like ballots are due and whatnot. Like if that, if that's the advertised time is 4 p.m. is, uh, is it actually open until 4.30? Your thing says 4.30 and that's what I had previously thought it to be, but I think it's fine for now. I'm just curious about that time. It's a totally small thing, but I'll, I'll check again. I hope it's the 4.30 because that's what it says in the in an email for accepting ballots till 4.30 at the ballot box. So uh, it has to stay unlocked until 4.30. Yep. So I wonder why... Box. I maybe but I'm, I'm hoping the office stays open. <laughs> Might need That's to for election season. End of business anyway. So I don't know. Yeah. But anyway. Okay. Yeah. I think that's just something we need to verify with staff. Is it the Yeah. Uh, so before you send this, Gail, make sure you verify with staff that their regular business hours are from nine to four thirty or from nine to four o'clock. I will do that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we have to call the vote on this one. All in favor? Okay. Um, we per, we kind of have the AGM timeline. We looked at it earlier, so I think we'll be fine with that. Mm -hmm. um, we have our July fifth applications open. September day after Labor Day, we will do our draw gather all the applications and draw and I you know we all we need at least two or three people there and a staff person which last year was Joanne and she vetted everybody real quickly we put names in the hat drew an order and away we went pretty simple and we set the ballot box out um that day also so um so that's the basic timeline we will have other little things to do as they come. Right now, we're wait. What we the big wait right now is for the budget, and then we start putting the packet together. So I think we're fine on that. And so step four is review Karen's. We've sort of talked about it already, and we have. It, it's not urgent exactly. It will be urgent though by June because then we'll have to, you know, well at least we have to have something we've approved to to put in the actual packets available yep. July 7th. Do you want to throw it on the screen real quick? Yep. So I actually think a lot of the stuff we talked about tonight gives me enough mm -hmm. direction to kind of change we, or update some of the it. things that I had questions on or that hadn't. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what this, yeah, okay. So, so I need to change administrative office. I'm gonna do this to, ma I'll match Gail's letter the same wording that she uses. Mm -hmm. um, the welcome center. Yeah, and, and put in the actual address, I think is good. Okay. Um, so based on, let's see, I think I need to change. Well, I think this wording is okay. Please note, in addition to the application materials, all candidates are asked to, or I could say encouraged to submit like a maximum yeah. one word. But encouraged. I yeah, like encouraged. Okay. I use that down below. Okay. And I said by the application deadline, but that's not true. It's September 7th, right? Because mm -hmm. we decided we have to give them two days. Oops. Yeah, because of yeah, the issue that we yeah. don't want to reveal who they are. Yeah. Three. These can be emailed to TBD. Okay, board candidates additionally are encouraged. So same wording. It's been electronically, maximum 500 essay, blah, blah, blah. No later than, so this is again, September 7th. Printed in the October reviews, the biographies and photos are awesome. Okay, so that explains how they are used. Um, Maybe take um, up. After or five business now. days, remove that whole line there. Remove it all. Yep. Okay. It doesn't need to be there yet. This is probably. Well, I think they took it out of NNE &E anyway. They did. So. It's up to whatever date we're going to get them to agree to tomorrow night. Right. Yeah. And then, well, well, I thought they took out the 
they can you can withdraw any time. So we could put in wording. Yeah. We could put in wording that says after this date, mm -hmm. you will still you'll still appear in the the in the ballot. In the ballot. I'm gonna yeah. just put a tickler to remind myself. Oh yeah, that's good. Um, after September 15th. Yeah, it, I guess that's right. It's somewhere that's somewhere around. That's when there. we get to submit oh, our see. final approval. No changes. I mean, uh, we can do better yeah, wording, yeah, but yeah. Okay. we'll see. Okay. Just put and on then, their withdraw. Put the word the in there. Withdraw. Okay. Oh, it keeps skipping around forever. on me. Yeah, right in there somewhere. So you know it's for the withdraw, if withdrawn. All right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Two candidate forums. Dominant. We had talked about three. I found in my notes from my meeting oh, okay but we should uh, maybe say two or three or we could say i don't know i'm just going to highlight this because it i'm that's going to mean it's a question for me yep. okay the uh the comment from a board person was two okay. candidate forums and I said, well, could we have other ones like the last ones? And uh, they said, Southern Valley Wall, you know, does two candidate forums. You may do other things, but we have to cross that bridge when we get there. <laughs> I was just going to say, says yeah. who? I mean, last year, the, the extra ones were all done by the candidates themselves. Yeah. They were yeah. informal. Yes. Okay. I think it looks great. We'll fine tune okay. it um after we'll, we'll know a whole lot more after tomorrow night yeah so if you could i don't always get to watch those board meetings yeah. anytime timely so if you want to send us or me yep, just a, I and i will go ahead and update this with what i know yep. at mm -hmm. that time and send it back out and then we can hopefully approve it quickly at the next meeting because it will need All to right. be ready okay before the end of June. all right so then new business is um, discuss uh, the NE chair and secretary positions. Well, I think that's on you, Michael. All right. So, at, at least to describe, uh, you know, as far as I'm sent, concerned, you can stay chair all summer. Email. All year. I, sent out, I sent out an agenda to you guys that had yeah. all my ABCs and Ds on it. But um, Gail said, we'll just send it to the board as discussed changes in, in any chair and secretary positions. Anyhow, I'm July or June, starting early in June, I'm gonna be busy on Thursday. I, have, I booked events for my cart and uh, I've had events. I wouldn't have done it except I had one big event taken away from me that I usually do on Wednesday night and they chose to go a different direction and choose new vendors because it's been the same for so many years. They thought they'd shake things up and use different vendors and we'll see how it goes for them because I'm sure they're going to get some comments about where the hell is the hot dog guy. But at any rate, um, and a couple other of the food vendors that they were going to change. And so um, at any rate, so I booked these things on Thursday night. One is the Elizabeth Park music thing and uh, a couple other little things that are on Thursday night. So I'm not going to be able to go to the board meetings. And I brought this up to AJ a while back, three months ago. And I said, what do you think about having Gail come as chair pro tem? And then I come back in you know September and... Uh, that when we have representation to bring information back to NE &E and and all. And he's, his comment was, oh, it's not going to hurt you to miss, you know, there's not that much going to be going on. You won't, it won't hurt to miss that many meetings. I said, it's three months. Um, so <laughs> right yeah. in election season. <laughs> yeah, right before the election. Yeah, we really want to be in the dark for three months. Yeah. So, um, so that's what's going on. So from, I'm going to have to, um, what I wrote here was Michael's business is going to keep him from being able to attend the board meeting and represent in an committee from June 8th through August 24th. And it's imperative that in &E has representation at board meetings. These are the options that I came up with 
um, the biggest consideration is in the contract with Unilect that only the general manager and the chair of in and are allowed to communicate about the AGM and what's going on for November. And they put that in the contract so that not anybody could talk with Catherine and Andrew or at Unilect. It had to be the board or the in and chair, which would be Joanne or the NNE chair. And that was put in the contract this year because um, of a reason. <laughs> um, at any rate, so um, A, Michael will step down as chair and will elect a new chair and secretary. B, Michael will step down and we will elect Gail as chair pro tem and someone else's secretary. C, Michael will step down and will elect Gail as chair and Michael as secretary. Or D, Michael and Gail will change back to their original roles after my work commitment is completed. And then Michael resume the chair position through the AGM with Gail shadowing him to learn the challenges in running the election. Um, the reason I have Gail there is I don't know. I know Gail was elected and you mm -hmm. guys volunteered. So I don't know the, the parameters of you were elected. I was elected, but I stayed because nobody filled my spot and you guys volunteered and so we gail and i are both actually elected people and i don't know how the volunteer how they what the board's going to say about volunteer positions so that was my thing not to ace you out or anything because i think you're all capable of doing this yeah um but that was my consideration of that we were actually stood on the grounds that we were voted in well and, and the community so, i mean i think it represents the community better to have actual elected people yeah. okay. as the chair yeah I, agree. So I want to make a motion that we did that i want to i want to make a motion that we re we re-establish who's chair and who's secretary for n and e second okay discussion so I think it makes sense based on your circumstances to mm -hmm. elect Gail as chair to represent n &E to the board and to elect you or whatever, nominate you as secretary. And I think to keep it clean, we can just revisit it at a later date if that arrangement no longer makes sense rather than uh, putting additional things in for the future, I guess. Okay, so that was option C, that Michael stepped down, we elect Gail as chair, and Michael as secretary. Rob? Um, I, I agree with everything that Karen has said. Um, Michael, I think that there was a, a piece in there, one of the options where you indicated that when, when um, you're not as busy with your business coming back, there would be mentoring going on um, with, between you and Gail. And I think that's, that, that's excellent. Um, we need a good transition for you, you know, for yeah. your, what you know, your knowledge to, for yeah. Gail and, I, and I mean, I, I'm a volunteer. I, the community didn't elect me. So um, uh, I think it's absolutely right that, that Gail would, would take over as chair. Gail, do you have my feelings? Thought, my thought was, and uh, well, let, let me, okay. So the two things, and I kind of brought this up with Gail last night. They said, one, if I step down, we elect Gail as chair and me as secretary, they're going to have to discontinue my email address and set Gail up with an email address. And then if we, in 
first of September, we vote me back in as chair and Gail as secretary, they're going to have to cancel her email address and put me back in with an email address so I can finish communication and all that in with board communication. And so I was going to try to sell it to them as Gail would come as chair pro tem. You wouldn't have to do anything other than just let her sit in the meetings. She would convey what was going on to me as chair um, in our NE meetings or in emails. And then the, the staff wouldn't have to do anything. There wouldn't be any of redoing and resetting up and all that and everything and to make it easy on them. Um, but I don't know how, you know, how that's going to go. Well, from an administrative standpoint, uh, turning off an email uh, is is really simple. It, it's it's yeah. not that's it's like two minutes. Um, yeah. uh, from a first, I want to say, Michael, I ad, I admire your leadership. I admire your perseverance um, and your your knowledge about entity. I really appreciate you um, yeah. taking the time to go run these meetings and go to the mm -hmm. board meetings. Um, but having said that, I think that the chair pro tem is, could be construed by some board members as being a unrecognizable position. Uh, and I just think that we, we as an N&E, we, we, um, of course, we report to leadership, but we, uh, what's the word I'm trying to use? We we are a committee um, that makes our decisions and our, we would decide who our leader would be or who our leaders are, or would not be. We could change three times throughout the year. That's our decision. Um, there are. I just think it's cleaner this way to say um, uh, you need to step down for a little bit. Um, and Gail is our is our chair. And if we decide to do something different in September, then that's our decision. You know? um, but I really again, have I, to. I respect I what. Yep. I agree. I don't even really have to come back as chair. Gail can and can we can talk about. If Gail's chair and she's dealing with Catherine and she has questions, she can talk to me and I can say, oh, this is what mm -hmm. we did, or these are the answers, or this is what I would suggest from past what you do. And that's kind of giving her, letting her take the leadership role and me shadowing her and saying, no, do this. And in the past, we did this. So this is what I would suggest, but you go ahead and talk to her and, and all that. So I can do it from the <laughs> background also. And just leave Gail in as chair for the all the way through the rest of the election. So I loved the idea of chair pro tem at the beginning when you originally said it, and I really appreciate both of your dedication to running and especially Michael, you of, of the mentoring and all that. But it's the idea that they kind of balked at that that makes me concerned that we would end up getting shut out of communications at a time when it's critical. Yeah. The entity have a seat at the table and be up to speed on everything that's going on election related. And so, you know, it, it was a great idea and I really appreciate you bringing it forward, but we already kind of floated it and it didn't go over well. And so, you know, I agree with Rob, we have yeah. the ability, we have a little bit of a, well, every committee does honestly have some autonomy to, um, operate itself, but any even more so to choose its own leaders. And I think we can revisit this as much as we need to, that makes sense for our okay. committee. Yep. So. All righty. So. Um, well, I want to say just a couple of things. Well, first, Michael, if, if this is going to be what happens, I will be eternally grateful to you for stepping in because I don't think I could have done both. I probably would have skipped out on those board meetings. Uh, it, I simply could not have done both. And so, you know, so you should have taken the brunt of uh, being the the face of our communication. Um, and thank you. 
just thank you for that. And otherwise, you know, I mean, volunteering, I think we all do it and probably all the volunteers do it because they want to help out. You know, they don't, they don't want others to do all the work and then they sit back and say, hey, I didn't like this and I didn't like this and et cetera. You know, if you're going to complain, well then step in and, and participate. But it is a lot of work. That's all I, I find that when I was on the board back in the day, you know, and I, you know, it was, it's a lot of, of effort, a lot of time commitment to do this kind of thing. Um, I'm willing to do it. Maybe I'll even enjoy it. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hard to say. Some very Hard pleasant people that are on the board. And there are some unpleasant people, but there are some very pleasant people on the board that I've enjoyed chatting with and all. It's not terrible. Yes, and probably everyone on the board is doing, you know, as they say, the best they can by their best understanding of what's needed, because that's usually very few people are, are do, do things other for, than for that reason. And then, what did I want to say? Yeah, my main concern on the chair pro tem thing is with the chair pro tem, it applies that there is no chair. And so the chair pro tem is stepping in in the absence of a chair. You wouldn't have a chair and a chair pro tem. But it doesn't surprise me that because it's not in the bylaws and et cetera, that it's, you know, the board would have trouble swallowing this idea. And, and the, one of the things I'm willing to do is just work, work with the board they have a job to do. I'd like to avoid delays and avoid having to come back and revisit and revisit and revisit. But you know, keep keep things moving. That's my little two cents, maybe, for what it's worth. Yeah, also, my, my feeling is you you will be a great team member to the board. Mm -hmm. well, thank you you, you are, are we all enjoy working with you very much. So oh, thank you. it'll it'll go well. Um, it's just an un, a pro tem is an unrecognizable position, and I, I think we need to have something definitive. Mm -hmm. I think I think this board would have a hard time telling us we can't do this. Mm -hmm. They, I I don't think come back and say sorry. You only get one chance to elect a chair. I, I really and truly don't believe that they're going to feel that they have anything, anything in the bylaws allows them to tell us. We are, the, the degree of autonomy of NNE to me is amorphous. I'm not at all clear where things begin and end. I know that somewhere it states that the board and NNE will work cooperatively. Yeah. So. <laughs> the board doesn't get to run the election, NNE does. Yeah. And I want to we everybody on the board is pleasant. I just disagree with some of them. So I should say that. Yes, you should um, say that, Michael. Thanks, I shouldn't Michael. have said anything at all, period. <laughs> um, and they'll probably be happy that I'm stepping down because I shouldn't say things that I do say. But anyhow, um so yeah, I, I think I, Michael, I I th really think we need to vote on this so it's official. Yeah. So I think we should vote. Um but the vote right. I would like and to the motion nominate on the table is that we will reestablish. I'm sorry. I would like to nominate Gail as I I I at this point I am going to step down as chair. So I'm making official official that Michael has stepped down as chair and we need to elect a new chairperson. And mm -hmm. so since Gail was elected at the last NE, I rec I want to nominate Gail as chair mm -hmm. for NE. Second that. Okay. Thank you, Michael, and thank you, Rob. And do we need to have a discussion? I don't know. Okay. Vote. Accept. Thank you. Okay. So unanimous. Gail is now um chair of N E. Now can I nominate you, Michael, as secretary? I would take volunteers as secretary. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 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 May I interject? <laughs> We've just been that the secretary got a huge work assignment coming up. Now I'd be happy to complete it. I truly would be happy to complete it. I said to Michael, could the chair also be the secretary? Well, it is good to, you know, not even you don't want to change anything. But I'd be happy to complete that. And then if someone else wants to become the new secretary, I could send it off to them to proofread or whatever. 
and bring it back to our next meeting or however we're going to make that happen. Go ahead and take the secretary job because I can make the changes. I've done it before on the the mm -hmm. the thing that we talked about. If any is going to is approved to do the manual i can do i i know exactly what we need to do and okay. how to do it i did it a lot was involved in it so i don't mind taking that i was kid you know i was just saying if somebody really <laughs> wants to be secretary i don't want to cheat you out of it so <laughs> well i nominated you because i feel like the president and the secretary kind of work together closely um and you guys already have that good rapport and kind of it just sort of is a natural thing. I don't want to shirk responsibilities, Michael. So if you get into your busy season and you're like, this is too much, I think you bring it forward and you say, hey guys, I, I can't continue to do this I'll have and, time. and we'll step up. I just don't have Thursday night to go to the board okay. meeting is all. I have time. I have you, given Mark. myself margin. <laughs> Good. Good plan. Okay. So Karen nominated me as secretary. I second that. Okay. Do we want to, did we discuss it? So do you want to vote? Yep. All in favor. Okay. So elected Michael as secretary. All righty. So we've covered all our business. And, and it's um, eight o'clock. To, to real quickly highlight all this, I am going to go to the board meeting tomorrow night. I'm going to request that we amend the agenda so that I can bring up what happened here tonight. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to request that these four points that, Gail, if you'll make sure you email me these four points clear clearly mm -hmm. so that I have it. I don't have to go look through mm -hmm. emails for it. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And um, I will go to the board tomorrow night and bring up these four points to get board approval because we do not have a clear in an manual. Mm -hmm. um, and then if in any, if the board approves these things, uh, in any will volunteer to make all the changes and present a complete manual. Mm -hmm. And that Gail is now going to come starting the next board meeting. Gail will be chair and I will be secretary. And that's what we achieved tonight besides looking everything else over. Yeah. Good All right. Well, Good meeting. Well, we're to you, Michael. You always end these on time. Alan was saying, <laughs> when are we going to eat dinner? I said, Michael always ends them at 8. <laughs> at 7.30, but hey. <laughs> and, and I smell something really good in my kitchen, so. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Um, motion to close the meeting. Move to close. Second. Okay. Second from Karen. Thank you guys. I appreciate your endeavoring to persevere here. And we hammered this all out. And uh I think I think we'll be fine. All right. Are, Thank you. Are, okay, hold on before we do anything here. I have to stop recording. Um